Hi, I'm Dr. Molly Gebrian, and this is the second video in this series on memorization and preparing for memorized performance. So in the first video, which I've linked to below, um, we talked about different types of memory, and then we started talking about the first stage of the memorization process, which is known as encoding. This video, the second part, will talk about consolidation, which is the second part in the memory formation process. So basically, the most important thing for consolidation is sleep. Um, I'm going to do a quick uh, commercial, which if you've seen my other video on sleep, uh, you've already seen the commercial, so I'll make it quick. Um, I highly, highly recommend this book, um, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Dr. Walker is one of the leading neuroscientists on the study of sleep. And I cannot recommend this book highly enough. I don't get any money from the sale of this book, I promise. I just think it's totally amazing, fascinating, and that everybody should read it. Okay, end of commercial. Anyways, so when you learn new information, it goes into your brain and it's stored in a short-term memory store called the hippocampus. You have one on each side of your brain. And the hippocampus is just for short-term storage. It doesn't have a huge capacity and it doesn't have a mechanism for, for long-term storage. And so somehow the information has to get from the hippocampus out to the cerebral cortex, so the bumpy part of your brain that you probably think of when you think of brains. Uh, it has to get out to the cerebral cortex um, for long-term storage where it can be stored sort of indefinitely and there's sort of unlimited capacity for long-term storage. So we know that this transfer from the hippocampus out to the cerebral cortex takes place while you sleep. So for motor memories, for muscle memories, that transfer takes place primarily during REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, which you've probably heard of. For non-motor memories, declarative memory, so that is what, what notes and rhythms are actually on the page, um, that takes place primarily during non-REM sleep, which is the opposite of REM sleep. So if you don't get enough sleep or you don't sleep at all, this transfer process either can't take place, period, or it will take place incompletely. So if you don't get a full night's sleep, either REM or non-REM sleep or both will get shortchanged and then the transfer will be incomplete and you'll lose information or the information that you have, it will be kind of like a corrupted file, um, if you're thinking in computer terms. And so it's imperative that you get enough sleep if you want to retain things and have them transfer to long-term storage. Sleep scientists consider a full night's sleep to be eight hours. Um, there is variation, of course, in how much sleep people need, but not as much as you'd think. So adults need seven to nine hours of sleep. Anybody that thinks that they can survive on six hours of sleep alone, um, unless you were in a, a very, very small minority of the population and you have a genetic mutation, you need more than six hours sleep. Um, if you want to know more about this, there's a lot of great information about this in Dr. Walker's book that I, that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. So we've known for a while that you get a boost in your performance following a full night's sleep. Um, I have a whole video on this information um, that I'll link to below in the comments. So if you want to know more about that research, please go watch that video. Um, I'm not really going to reiterate it here. But that research wasn't looking at memorization per se. And so my question was, do you get a bump in your ability to do something from memory following a full night's sleep? Um, fortunately, we have a study that was done on musicians that, that looked at addressing this issue. So let me describe what they did in the study. It's a little bit of a complicated design, so just bear with me. All right, so in this study, what they did was they had a group of pianists, and the goal was to get them to play either melody A or melody B from memory. And you can see them there and you can read them. You see, you can see they're not very long, they're not very hard, but that was the goal. Can you play melody A or melody B from memory? They broke these pianists into four different groups. So the first group learned melody A, then they went to sleep, got a full night's sleep, and then the next day they were tested on their memory for melody A. That's what the top part of that graphic is showing where it says A, sleep, A. All right, the second group, the next line down on that graphic, learned melody A, tried to memorize it, then they tried to memorize melody B, then they went to sleep, and then the next day they were tested on their memory for melody A. Group three 
learned melody A, tried to memorize melody A, then they tried to memorize melody B, then they had a little refresher course on A, then they went to sleep, the next day they were tested on melody A. The final group learned melody A, went to sleep, the next day they learned melody B, and then they were tested on their memory for melody A. So the question in this study was, do you get a bump in learning in your ability to memorize something following a night of sleep? And also, does melody B, does learning melody B interfere in any way with melody A? So what did they find? This graph here shows the results of this study. I want to draw your attention first to the very top line on this graph that has the open diamonds as the data points. This is the group that learned melody A, then they slept, and they were tested on their memory for melody A. So you can see that the data point over where it says training 10, 11, 12, that's how well they were doing in their ability to play it from memory at the end of the day. The next data point over where it says retests AM, that's how they did the next morning when they were retested on their ability to play Melody A from memory. And you can see that their performance the next day is better than at the end of the training. So they did get a boost in their ability to play it from memory. If you look at the next two lines down, so the one that has open circles as the data points and the one that has closed squares as the data points, you can see that between the end of the training, so that's where it says training 10, 11, 12, and then the retest the next morning, those lines are essentially straight across. That means that they got no bump in the performance. So these groups, the one with the open circles, that's the group that learned Melody A, then they went to sleep, the next day they learned B, and then they were tested on A. The group with the squares is the group that learned A, then they were tested on B, then they slept, and then they were tested on, on A the next morning. So it seems that Melody B blocked this boost. They didn't get worse at Melody A, but they didn't get that boost that the first group got. The most interesting is the bottom line. So this is the one that has the closed triangles as the data points. This is the group that worked on melody A, worked on melody B, then got a little refresher on A, went to sleep, and then had to perform melody A the next day. And if you look under where it says retest PM, that's the data point for the little refresher on A. If you compare that data point, so their performance at that point, with their performance where it says retest AM the next morning, you can see the line goes up, which means they also got a boost in their ability to play it from memory. So B only interferes if you don't do A after B again, right? So they did the last thing they did before sleep was A, and then the first thing they did the next morning was also A. So obviously as musicians, we are working on memorizing things that are longer and harder than these little teeny melodies that they had in this, in this study. And we're working on a ton of music at once, right? We can't just work on one thing and, th and that's it. You know, so only melody A, no melody B. My takeaway from this study is that one spot that you just can't remember for the life of you, like every time you try to play from memory, like you always forget how that spot goes. Practice that spot last thing in the day, get a full night's sleep, and then practice that thing again first thing the next morning. Don't practice anything in between, um, and you will get a boost for that thing. Um, so that's my takeaway from this study, how I could actually use this in a practical way for myself as a musician. All right, so that's the end of this video on consolidation. So, so far we have covered the first two steps in the memorization process, so encoding and consolidation. Most important thing for consolidation, get enough sleep. Um, so the next video will be about retrieval, the final step in the process. So I hope you'll watch over there. And um, thanks for joining me on this video today.